an essential component of the cover-up, was the prevention of litigation, by the victims or their families. During trials, witnesses would be heard, experts consulted and evidence investigated. This had to be prevented at all costs, literally. A victim compensation fund was established, which distributed unlimited funds to the victims, if they waived their right to litigation. It is best explained by the special master of this fund, Kenneth Feinberg. Anybody who lost a loved one as a result of the 9-11 attacks, airplanes, World Trade Center, Pentagon, or anybody who was physically injured, could voluntarily waive their right to litigate. Don't sue the airlines. Don't sue the World Trade Center. Don't sue the security card companies. Don't sue Port Authority of New York. Don't sue Massport. Don't sue the security guard companies. Don't sue Boeing aircraft. Instead, waive your right to sue. Come into this no-fault administrative fund. You don't have to. But if you want to come into the fund, within 60 days after your application is complete, you will be given a tax-free check from the U.S. Treasury. No private money. This is all taxpayer funded. Now, that was the program. That was it. Over 33 months, oh, and the program, the statute said, how will the program work? How will it be administered? How will it be designed? We don't know. One person will design it, implement it, administer it. No appeals, no courts, uh, and that person will be appointed by the President uh, of the United States and the Attorney General of the United States. That's it, and good luck. What's the appropriation? No appropriation. Whatever it costs, whatever the award should be, the Special Master will authorize it out of petty cash from the U.S. Treasury. That's it. Astounding. Never been a program like that, ever, in American history. Well, over th so I was appointed. Why are we singling out a very few people who are the victims of a curveball of life's misfortune? Everybody else, Katrina, USS Cole, tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, Everybody else doesn't get $2 million tax-free from the taxpayer. It was a very unique pro program. It was unique in American history. I think it was a unique response to an unprecedented mm -hmm. disaster, 9-11. And I am convinced myself that the pr a program like that will never be repeated. But you don't feel it was inappropriate? Oh, to the contrary. I think it was the right thing to do. To design and administer a program, the goal being how do we attract, entice people, the dead, the injured, families of the uh, dead, not to litigate against the airlines, but instead come into this fund, waive their right to sue and take the money. In the 9-11 fund, everybody got a different amount of money in order to attract people out of the litigation system. This was not rocket science. This was a statute that delegated to a person the authority to distribute unlimited funds from the U.S. Treasury. We distributed, as you point out, Mark, $7 billion to 5,200 claimants, all public taxpayer money. Kenneth Feinberg is Jewish, an Israeli citizen, and has worked for the Israeli government. Kenneth Feinberg is a deeply and passionately committed Jew in the forefront of many Jewish causes and activities as is his extraordinary wife, Diane Didi Feinberg. And if you watched Shalom TV's coverage of the UJC's 2009 General Assembly in Washington, D.C., you may remember that that GA in Washington was hosted by Didi and Ken Feinberg. You told me before we began that one of the interesting things that you encountered was a, the situation in Israel after the decision by the Israeli government and the Sharon government to withdraw all of the Israeli citizens out of Gaza, and the settlers in Gush Katif were brought out, and then the question was, how would compensation 
be administered by the state of Israel. And they turned to you for some counsel, right? That's right. I went over to Jerusalem. I met with representatives of the Sharon government. I met with, I remember, a member of the Knesset, Natan Sharansky at the time. I met with the commission that Sharon had set up to examine the question of compensation. Ninety-seven percent of all eligible families and victims entered the program. Ninety-four people decided to sue rather than come into the program. That's all. Ninety-four. These remaining 94 cases were redirected to Sheila Birnbaum, who is also Jewish. I was appointed by Judge Hosting to act as a mediator for the 9-11 cases that did go into the first fund but went to the courts. And there were 93 cases that went to the courts. And as a mediator, my job for the court and for the families was to try to negotiate settlements so that people could get their resolutions before having to go to court with all of the uncertainties of court cases. And I'm proud to say that we settled 91 of the 93 cases, and now actually two more have settled, and there's only one case remaining. To this day, not a single trial ever occurred. But if it had, the presiding judge would have been Alvin Hillerstein. He is Jewish, and his son lives in Israel. Kenneth Feinberg, Sheila Birnbaum, and Alvin Hillerstein made it impossible for a fair trial to ever occur. They were all Jewish. This was no coincidence. They were appointed by other Jews. Birnbaum was appointed by Hillerstein. I was appointed by Judge Hellerstein. Kenneth Feinberg mentioned that he was appointed by the Attorney General. Uh, and that person will be appointed by the President uh, of the United States and the Attorney General of the United States. So I was appointed. It's likely that Michael Chertoff, the Assistant Attorney General for the Criminal Division, was involved with this choice. Michael Chertoff is an Israeli citizen. His mother was a founding member of the Mossad. Chertoff was the main author of the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act made Israeli companies involved in 9-11 immune to lawsuits. Chertoff also released over a hundred arrested Israeli spies, many of whom had clear ties to 9-11. To these facts we will later return. In 2005, Chertoff became the head of Homeland Security. As such, he was the head of the Federal Protective Service, Homeland Security Investigations, the Secret Service and the Federal Emergency Management Agency. An excellent position to prevent further investigations into 9-11. When Chertoff is confronted with evidence, he mocks it, to make sure no one takes it seriously. Mr. Chernoff, please do not feign ignorance on this, because if I can find this out, certainly you know it. Recently, six of the 10 9-11 commissioners have stated publicly that the 9-11 Commission was hogwashed, that it was set up to fail, and it was a whitewash. Recently, Bethlehem Publications, nine scientists that were given debris from the World Trade Centers have found evidence of nanothermite, a high-grade military explosive. Okay, Mandy, thank you. We're going to leave it there because we know where you're going. Mr. Chertoff, you've addressed that question. Yeah, I, I mean, again, I, you know, this, this uh, crops up from time to time, and, and uh, it has been looked at thoroughly by everybody. Uh, frankly, you have people who witness the planes going into the buildings. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's, I have to say it's like Holocaust denial and people who believe the president was, was not born in Hawaii. It's just, it's just a myth, a, kind of an out-there conspiracy theory, which does not warrant a lot of attention. Michael Chertoff has a cousin named Benjamin Chertoff. Benjamin Chertoff was the research editor of 9-11, Debunking the Myths, published by the magazine Popular Mechanics. This article's purpose was supporting the false narrative of 9-11. Uh, I think the, they expect to see a big tail sticking out. The airplane hit at over 500 miles per hour, and it's going from 500 miles per hour to zero in uh, 200 feet. 
the energy involved is again enormous.